The highlight of the first round was undoubtedly the clash between Nigel Short and Judith Polgar. Although Polgar is clearly the world's strongest woman player, Nigel was still the favourite for this match. In the first game, Judith opened with her customary pawn to e4, and Nigel played very solidly. He played at the French defence. Polgar played pawn to d4, and Nigel played the pawn to d5. That's the French defence. Knight came out to c3, protecting pawn e4. And now instead of the winner, bishop b4, which can lead to some very sharp positions indeed, Nigel played the classical, played his knight out to f6. Pawn came to e5, and the knight dropped back to d7. And now Judith played a slightly unusual move that was a favourite of Wilhelm Steinitz in the last century. She played knight back to e2. Nigel played his pawn to c5, attacking the pawn on d4, which Judith supported with c3. Knight came to c6, now f4. Nigel captured on d4, Judith recaptured. And now Nigel played a slightly unusual move plays pawn to f5, blocking up the kingside position. Interestingly enough, just before this tournament, I'd actually done a video on the French defence, and I'd recommended exactly this kind of defensive formation for Black. What Black is trying to do is close the position on the kingside, and then attack on the queen side. Knight came out to f3, and the knight came to b6 preparing a queenside offensive. And Judith played very aggressively, right from the word go. Now, the most normal move seems to me to be knight c3 and then bishop to d3, just developing some pieces. But she didn't bother with that at all. She played h3, and after bishop e7, she played the pawn to g4, trying to open up lines on the king's side. Now, this strategically, this is a good idea, but to do it so early on in the game is very risky, and Short took advantage of this straight away. He checked. And now Polgar is in deep trouble. She captured the bishop. That's possibly, possibly a mistake. Short recaptured with the queen. Check. And now the king had to go for a bit of a walk. Nigel played queen to f2. And just look at white's pieces. They can hardly move at all, and this king is running around in the middle of the board. This pawn on d4 is threatened. There's a knight here that threatens to come in c4 with check. The situation is desperate. Polgar felt forced to sacrifice pawn. She played the pawn to b3, and short captured on d4. Polgar continued meandering her king across the board, king c3, and now I think Short should have played his knight to f3, just keeping white's pieces completely clogged up. The most obvious move for white now seems to be knight to d4, but then bishop d7 comes, a really powerful move. The main idea of this is that after queen takes f3, rook c8 check, king b4, queen e1 check, king to a3, and now rook takes c1, gives black a winning attack. If instead knight takes f3, then rook c8 check again, if king b4, then queen c5 is mate, and if king to d3, then bishop b5 is also checkmate. Instead, Short chose to capture the rook in the corner, which also looks completely winning. The king came back to b2, and Short took the rook in the corner. Then knight takes d4. If we look at the position, black is an exchange and a pawn up, but the position is not quite as clear. 
White is threatening bishop to b5 check, winning the queen in the corner. So that's the immediate threat. So to get out of that, short checked with his queen. And then the king came back to b1. But now you can perhaps see that white's position is a little better coordinated than it was before. Short castled. It looks like a completely natural move. Then came a4, threatening to play a5, the knight must retreat to d7, and e6 hangs. So short played his pawn to a5. Rook came to a2. Now this was the real point behind moving the pawn up to a4. Suddenly the rook, which was bottled up in the corner, has given, been given some freedom. Queen came to g3, now rook g2, attacking the queen but also lining up against the king. And I think at this moment, Polgar might actually be winning. The game has turned so quickly. Short played queen c3, Polgar captured on, e, on f5, then e takes f5, so that's just opening up the g file. Then bishop b2, queen c7, Polgar played e6. Now let's just have a look at this position. White has a superb attacking formation. The bishop on b2 and the rook on g2 are lined up against the pawn on g7. The knight on d4 stands excellently. The bishop on f1 is ready to come into the attack, as well as the queen on d1. Now, if we have a look at black's position, look at that bishop on c8. It has no moves at all. It's locked in by the pawn on e6. The knight on b6, no moves whatsoever. Has no, no move that's, that's sensible. And if this knight and the bishop can't move, that means the rook in the corner is trapped. So, in effect, short is playing without the rook, bishop, and knight. And that's going to prove fatal. Short attempted to block out the bishop on b2 with his rook f6, but then came knight takes f5, a shocking move. If rook takes f5, probably a few ways to win, but the cleanest is queen to d4, a lovely move, very simple. The threat is rook takes g7 check, and there's no defense. If g6, then queen h8 is mate. Short played the rook to g6 to block the attack on the g file. Then came bishop e5, attacking the queen. Queen d8. And now knight takes g7. Polgo is playing it very simply indeed. There were many other attractive continuations, but this is just very simple, just keeping the pieces, the bishop on c8 and the knight on b6, locked out of the game. Short played the pawn to d4. Now he's hoping to bring his knight on b6 back into the game via d5, but it's a vain hope. They came f5, attacking the rook and supporting the pawn on e6. Rook takes g2, bishop takes g2, and now queen to g5. Now again, a very simple continuation from Polgar. She's known for her great attacking prowess. But here, she chose simply to exchange queens. That forces queen takes h5 because of the threats down to e8 and f7. And this ending is completely winning for white. Once again, it's those pieces locked out on the queen side, and of course, the pawns here will be deadly. The rook came up to a6, still not going anywhere. Polgar calmly captures pawn on d4. Short played knight a8, but after bishop d5, he was forced to resign. The threat is e7 check, and if king f8, then bishop c5 check, king e8, knight g7 check, king d8, e7 check, 
followed by e8, queen, and that's the end of the game. What a catastrophe for short. To have been presented with a winning position in the opening, only to throw it away so quickly, was humiliating for a player of his class. He was clearly demoralised for the second game, and went down to a polgar bristling with confidence. At the end, the crowd went crazy. Udic remained on stage for a few moments to receive the applause, and an enormous bouquet of flowers presented by admiring fans. <laughs>